So now that you've had a little bit of time to reflect, I imagine, I want to hear a little bit from you of what created this perfect storm? What led to this team winning the Super Bowl? And then, of course, now that we've heard you and BA at the parade saying things like, you know, going for two, what is it about that perfect storm that maybe needs to remain or, or would need to happen again to recreate that magic? First of all, we have a head coach that's a phenomenal leader that has zero fear and steadies the ship no matter what kind of turbulence we're going through. And every season has ups and downs and turbulence. And Bruce just has a way of keeping things, keep, keeping things real, but keeping things steady, like I said. When you have the head coach and the quarterback that have the same mindset that we're gonna be good, we just have a process that we have to go through to get there and some trial by error, but never any fear that it's gonna happen. And that was key to this year. When you look back, what did you do well building this roster to get to this point? Well, first of all, you say I built the roster, but we have a great staff of people that have helped me here. So that's very key. But I think in terms of the players, first of all, we had a lot of depth. We had a lot of depth that turned out to be at key positions where we needed it, whether it was receiver, offensive line, defensive line, even some moments in the secondary, linebacker. So we have depth. We have a phenomenal locker room in terms of football character, team attitude, unselfishness. I think that's my first takeaway of just just how great this locker room is. And it took a lot of great leaders on our team to mold the young guys into this. And I could go on and on, but JPP, Levante, Ndamukong, of course, Tom, Mike, it's, it's just a phenomenal group. And we had one goal and it, it's led by our head coach saying one, one team, one cause. And you know, everybody kept their eye on the prize all year. So many guys ended up playing such key roles in this Super Bowl run from these last two draft classes. Looking at that, what do you feel like you and, and your staff did well, did differently, that led to such successful guys being ready so quickly and, and how maybe you could apply that to this next draft? When Bruce came in, we had a, you know, a staff meeting and he said, you know, what I want here, coaches, scouts, we're all one team. And we need to, who we pick, it's our pick. It's not one individual scout's pick. It's not my pick. It's not Bruce's pick. It's our pick. So we're all vested in the players that we take. And we know exactly what they want in terms of the, the player because of the scheme. But we also know exactly what they're looking for in types of personality of the players. We, we like you know, aggressive players. We like players that love football, that are very passionate about it. It's about us. It's about our team. It's about we. So I think that helps us um, identify these players a little bit easier. The only downside to winning a Super Bowl is how short the offseason becomes. March, I'm sure, hit you really quickly uh, after all of that. So explain a little bit about the timeline right now in this offseason for you and your department and what all you guys are having to do and how challenging it is when your season isn't over until February to get all that done. I was on the stage after the Super Bowl and I mean, it was an amazing moment. This is awesome. And then on the field with my family and, and all the employees and players, it was. You know, it's one of the best feelings in the world after you win a Super Bowl. But I remember walking off saying, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. In terms of the evaluations of like free agents and the draft, it really doesn't take that much of a step back. The coaches need to catch up a little bit quicker, but you know, my scouts, they've been working on this all through the playoff run. Yeah, absolutely. And we would have just normally finished the combine recently, and now you don't have that. So tell me what that has been like and how you guys are planning on still getting the information you need that you would normally be getting at the combine. There'll still be pro days. Our scouts will do a, a hell of a job doing that like they have in the past. Without the combine and seeing them all work out back to back to back, it's just going to be a little bit different. We have to adapt, which we did last year. We had the combine, but things kind of shut down pretty quickly after that. So I was really proud of how everybody did it last year, had to switch gears. I feel like we had a really good draft and it's just all about adaptation and you know not fearing the element of doing something different. Everybody gets stuck kind of doing the same thing. It's always been done this way. And everybody's a little afraid to change the way things are done. But when you're forced to, you, you have no choice. And last year we were forced to, this year we'll be forced to. And I, I have all the confidence in the world that we'll be fine. And looking at all the things that you did have to do differently, I mean, for one thing, there were a lot less college games than normal even for you guys to evaluate. And I know your scouts weren't able to really um, do a lot of the personal side of it, of going to the campuses, talking to so many people that they had to adjust a lot of that and with their traveling. Um, so how did you guys handle all of that? What were some of the adjustments that did have to be made and everything that was different for your scouts in this last year? 
I feel like our scouts do a really, really good job of cultivating relationships within their schools, not just maybe the position coach, maybe not just the head coach or the trainer, but, but other people around the programs that can, can give you insight on players. And we have thousands and thousands of pages of character notes on all of these players already that we feel like we know them. We still need to meet with them via Zoom, and we've had some good discussions with some players already, but uh, last year we did a great job with that, organized by Mike Beal. Everything is relationship-based, I, I believe, and this business is no different. And what is the process for a lot of these hard decisions that you're gonna have to make, whether it's free agency, the draft, as you build a roster, the factors that go into it from who a guy is, to what position he plays, to how much money he's gonna cost, to who's in the draft. How do you weigh all of those things? What are some of the priorities and just the, the way you try to go about making those hard decisions that I'm sure uh, I would just sit there agonizing over <laughs> for hours on end? <laughs> well, we could talk for a long time about that. There's, there's a lot of different factors. There's a lot of, we have a lot of balls in the air right now, but you, it's just a matter of prioritizing what's important. What do we need to get done today? What do we need to get done tomorrow? You know, there's a lot that goes into it. And fortunately, I have a lot of great people working for me. So that'll help me get through it. Absolutely. And then now looking finally at the draft, uh, you always kind of talk about the idea of need versus best player available. That's kind of one of the, the big things. When you win a Super Bowl, I'm sure that the word need uh, probably doesn't mean quite what it has in the past, which is a really great problem to have. But how does this draft match up with needs that you guys would have at this, at this point? And how well does this draft serve you while you are now picking later than you've, than you've had to pick in a very long time? Right, yeah. I don't think it, you know, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't think uh, it's very often that a general manager has the first pick and the 32nd pick in the That's tenure. a great point, yeah. But, um, you know, I guess that shows progress. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think that's a safe bet. It, the, the, I'm still excited about the draft, still excited about picking number 32. You know, we picked, we picked some pretty good second rounders in the past, especially last year with Antoine. So that's the type of player you can hit on if you do it right, if the right player falls to you. In terms of our needs, every, even Super Bowl champions still have needs. It's not that you don't have needs. Maybe your needs become a little bit less paramount, but it's all gonna also depend on free agency here. Hopefully we can get all of our guys back. You know, picking the best available player, it's a good position to be in because those are the types of picks that usually have a, a higher percent chance of making it and making an impact down the road. It may be two years down the road, but you'll think, I'm glad we picked that guy. You may not need him right now, but at some point you will. So that's that's one of the exciting things about picking there, 32. Well, congratulations again. Good luck in the draft. And again, on behalf of all Bucks fans, thanks for bringing that trophy back. <laughs> Appreciate it.